Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Pierre Andriani, Design Studio Solutions Specialist from Autodesk. Today we're going to cover a very nice feature called the Feature Modifier, which first appeared in 2024. And we'll also talk about the 2024.1 version that has slight improvements. So here, the Feature Modifier, what it really does is it defines geometry within a four-sided surface. So here, I will define the geometry within this surface here. Everything is on the same plane. And what I will do is it will map it to this uh, rectangle here and I will transfer it to another four-sided surface somewhere in space. So if we look at uh, this target here, so what's going to happen is it's going to translate all these curves onto this parallelogram in space right there. So if you go under Object Edit and click on Feature Modifier, I'm going to go back to Defaults. And what it's asking you to do is select the source objects. And then I'm going to deselect the plane itself. Say Go. And then select the source reference. And my source reference is here. And my desk, and press space bar. And then my target reference is that one. As you can see, it translated all these curves from here into there in one go. I uh, could also say create history, but now it doesn't have it. But you can see it, you know, gently placed everything that was in here and put it where I need it to be in space right here. So let's try this again. I'm going to delete history and do a feature modifier again, and this time create history. Something else I'm going to do is I'm going to add this perimeter curve. So. I want to move these curves here, and this is the perimeter line. And I want to make sure that all of these surfaces, well, all these curves come in into this boundary, but do not go past this one here. So again, I'm going to say select the source objects, unselect the box itself, say go, select the source reference, this is that one. Then select the target reference, which is that one. And now you can see it came here into this boundary right there but now i do have history so what if what happens if i can say go ahead and extend this top surface here see it has history so i can gently extend this or unextend this piece here and then gently re-extend this so now i have a nice full layout of those quadrants into position into this uh, piece right there and this is really useful uh, in this case to do a grill for example so I could just transfer everything from one one plane into another uh, surface in space which is could be very helpful so another use of this would be what if I had a vent I have a vent here that's been built flat right and it has its face so right here has a four-sided face so what if i could transfer this vent which it does have continuity and this and this view and what if i moved it into position onto the surface and that would really help so what if i i just gonna take this off i'm gonna have uh, some faces pre-built already take these off now what if i say feature modifier and i keep my history on so the vector option now by default is normal, meaning that it's going to put all these surfaces normal to my destination surfaces. So if I say select the source and the source to unselect the face, spacebar, then get the source here, spacebar, and then asking me, do you want a box select or the target reference? So like if I go one, two, three, or if I box everything and that one so now it moved everything into position according to my masterpiece right there and if I wanted to change the die vector for example in this case it will be in the X direction I just click on X and I would try to reorient all these surfaces into the X vector and right now it's going to come back to normal so this is a really useful tool to create arrays or to create different pieces especially if you have a grill that has a recurring motif you can just use the feature modifier to help you go faster 
Okay, now let's try another example. So here I have the Autodesk logo within this square here. And what if I want to move it to this sub D data here? A sub D is just uh, multiple surfaces so on top of these three surfaces. So if I go to feature modifier, double click. Now there are some options that are available only in 24.1. So multiple outputs, then the rotational uh, controls here are only available in 24.1, I believe. So if I say, let's go ahead and select the logo. Let's agree. This is the reference. Go. And if, if I said I want to transfer it to those three surfaces. So right now it's sub D with three and three parts. But what if I say un if I unclick multiple outputs only in 24.1, then it does build it across all three. The other controls you want to watch are those rotation. You can just rotate all three, for example, or plus or minus. You can flip it, flip side. Again, you can change the vector options. So here I did have a normal uh, a vector into the Z direction at seven degrees. And if you do it in the Z direction here, it will try to keep your vector at seven degrees as well. It will try its best to achieve continuity and the vector. So something to experiment for yourself. But again, if you if I turn on my CVs onto the destination here, and pull up the history. There are different things they can do if you want to keep the ratio and you want to shrink to trim. So if you look at the CVs, the CVs will be shrunk to trim. Again, multiple outputs, we discussed that. You can lock your controls and make that bigger or smaller. So there are a lot of different options into the feature modifier that will really help you speed up your workflow. One place where the feature modifier is really powerful is to do knurling. So if I go into my palette and click on my player and go to the toolbox in 24.1, there's a new script called surface on revolve. So if I click it and close that, I'm going to say, okay, which is a closed guide curve. So it's really the periphery of this curve. So select curve, this one, select surfaces and click this one and I'm going to leave the other ones as they are and hit accept and hit build. And so it will take a second to compute, but what happens is it will build a distributed amount of planes around a knob, not uh, basically a knob to get your neurals. Uh, if you look closely at these planes, I know you're thinking, okay, those are not great planes, but the beauty is of the feature modifier. It doesn't really, matter. What only matters is the four corners. So as long as it recognizes four corners, it will put whatever places, whatever things you want to put in your feature modifier, it will put this correctly. So that's another great example. So if I just uh, bump up the amount of points and click update, see how long it will take. So right now the distribution is staggered. So you can go ahead and play with it and have you can also, so I believe you can select a, uh, a size, uh, how big this uh, plane should be, but those are some one of the things you can go ahead and play with on your own. So that's the, the script to revolve planes around, uh, around the revolve surface. Now I'm going to show you is how I've used the uh, feature modifier in this example. So if I make things visible, see here, I have different patterns I can use. I can use this uh, bolt shape here or this diamond there. So what I've done is I created some curves and I measured this, those distances. So if you look at these curves, like I know if I have those, uh, if I repeat these as a staggered pattern, I know I can repeat them. I believe it was 36 times around to get my knobs. So what happens is I get a bunch of planes and I'll show you my finished plane. So the planes I got from these curves are right like so. So I know those will stagger nicely when I create them. So if I go ahead and say object edit feature modifier, and if I say I want to use this as my base and this as the reference, and then I want to go ahead and pick everything 
unpick this. So now I have my diamond on there. Oh, obviously I did it wrong. Let me try it again. So if I go feature modifier and go this guy to that guy. Okay. Select this box there and then go like this. There we go. Ah, because I think I have a single input. So if I say multiple outputs, that's yeah, better. All right. So now if I look at this band here and this band is also pulling the Z. So if I go normal, so now I have a nice staggered amount of diamonds. And I believe, as I said, in my case, it was something like 30 or 36. I can repeat all the way around and that will make a nice uh, finish nil. So I can delete that and then I can say, all right, what if I do a feature modifier of this bit here? Select those planes here and then select all of these except the top one. And there we go. So now I have a nice boat looking pattern and looks all right. So I have a finished product in here somewhere. So let me find it. So that's one feature. So I have one that's diamond. So you can see the uh, diamond pattern across the neurals. Or I have a uh, neurals uh, finished, um, almost finished piece of, there you go. So a nice pattern all the way around the knob. So again, that's one way to use a feature modifier. I hope you'll find it useful. If you like more demos on the feature modifier, please follow Don McArdle's page, which is Miss uh, Viz Wiz right there. And she has a great demo about uh, wrapping a text of a tire and how to do a texture. I highly recommend it. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.